Hey there, everybody. Creeperoni here. It's 6 a.m. on a Saturday, and I can't stay asleep. I'm kept up by a memory from over 10 years ago um, of an experience that opened my eyes to what could exist between our world and that of the past on. This isn't even a creepypasta. <laughs> I'm just following the memory, so be patient with me. And I don't think this should take too long. Uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, my long-term boyfriend at the time, he dumped me unexpectedly uh, the summer after we graduated. And to top it off, my family was going bankrupt. And my schnauzer I'd had since I was really little, he was dying too. Uh, when it came time for fall, um, all my friends had already gone off to the different schools that they'd be going to across the state, preparing for the new lives that they'd have, and I decided to go to a more local school where I could live on campus and, and visit my family on the weekends. But I spent day and night taking care of my schnauzer um, as he was breathing his last, and I spent a lot of time on the internet chatting. Um, I used this program called Rose, where I could make uh, houses um, that I could live in and just fantasy houses. And I could um, invite people over in my little chat world and, and talk to them. And that's where I met Andy. Andy was super nice. He was from Tennessee. I thought he was funny. We had a lot in common. So we chatted throughout the summer. And when it came time for fall, um, well, we just kept talking. And I really missed my boyfriend that I'd had. It made it kind of nice to have a new guy to talk to who is really different from my old boyfriend. And uh, so we, we kind of hit it off and we went from being casual friends to having kind of a, a relationship. <laughs> um, and so I, I really wanted to escape because I was stressed out by starting a new school and I was, I was lonely. I've always been pretty lonely, but... I was extremely lonely when I lost my boyfriend. So I spent a lot of time talking to Andy on Rose and then on the phone. And I wanted to visit him so bad um, just to get away from, from Georgia for a minute and to be able to talk to him in person and, and see him and meet his family. And one of the strange things was that we never shared pictures of our houses we never um, talked too much about our houses. Keep in mind, this was like 2006, <laughs> so I didn't have a Facebook, uh, and MySpace wasn't for posting pictures of your house. It wasn't a big chat pl platform either. So um, all we really had was, was text space, and um, we did talk over Skype sometimes. And um, after he visited me at my school where it was public, and I found out that he wasn't a big weirdo, <laughs> Um, I was willing for us to go a little bit deeper with the relationship, but I, I wanted to go visit his family. And what's so strange is in all this wishful thinking, uh, I had imagined at nighttime when I was, when I was sleeping, I guess I'd dreamed it, um, seeing his house and going to it and visiting it. And when I actually went to Tennessee, I was so surprised that the house that I dreamed was the exact same house that he lived in. And I told him so. And I guess what's funnier is that that's not even the strange part of the story. The strange part of the story happened during my visit. Andy had explained to me on the way to Tennessee that I'd be able to meet his parents, but that I likely wouldn't be able to meet his sister. He shared about how his sister had mental problems and that the whole family was real worried about her. Um, I'm not quite sure where she was staying, maybe with a friend. She was only maybe like a year older than, than myself and Andy, so um, not necessarily so old that you'd expect her to have her own apartment. Um, but he made it clear that I could use her old room uh, while I stayed with them for a couple days. So once I got there, um, I unpacked my stuff in her room, and... It felt like I had walked from a normal room 
into like a freezer. Uh, the the world seemed to get darker and colder the second I, I walked towards her bed. But at the time, I wasn't very superstitious um, or anything like that, so I just chalked it up to maybe the airflow in the house was weird. It felt so stale in there. So I left my stuff in there, and he and I went out with his parents for dinner, and we had a really good time. His parents were sweet. Real religious, but but sweet. Um, and so they made sure when we got back that we weren't to have any real alone time because like I said, they, they were real religious and, and that's okay. That's to be expected a lot in the South. So after dinner, we kind of said our good nights and he walked me to his sister's room and that's where he left me. He didn't come in there with me. He just, you know, asked me um, to have, or not asked me, but told me to have a good night. And so I closed the door and got ready for bed. I don't know how much later it was. Um, I woke up and it felt like the world was in a twilight state, like a, a light darkness, if that makes sense. And once again, even though I had plenty of covers on me, the world had gone cold. I had remembered distinctly closing the door when I went to bed, but now it stood open. And through the corner of my eye, I could see a man standing there. At first I thought, well, maybe it's Andy's dad come to check on me, make sure that I'm all right in the room. But it, I don't even know the words. I'm kind of losing my words here because the memory is just so strong and strange. But the man wasn't Andy's dad. I felt like I couldn't move my head, just my eyes, and what I could see from my eyes was that the man was a big guy uh, with dark hair and the makings of a beard, and he was wearing a dirty wife beater style top. He was breathing heavily, um, and I could just feel hatred. And it's weird being able to say I could feel hatred, but I could. It was as though the man was speaking to me in words that only my mind could hear. I could feel expectancy too, that the man expected something from me. When I looked down at my own body, which felt like it weighed 4,000 tons at that point, I was wearing this strange old-timey nightgown, cotton, maybe like a gingham-y floral, pl- floral mix print, kind of like I'd imagine my granny must have worn back in maybe the 70s or so. And then I looked back at the man, and he began to yell at me. I wanted to get up and run, so I tried to get up, and I did. Uh, I was standing right next to the man. I tried to yell, but I couldn't say anything. And the man, he, he was saying things to me, curse words, that I'm, I'm not going to yell into this microphone. Um, and I thought for sure that the man had break had broke. I thought that man had broken in the house and that he was going to try to hurt me. He grabbed me, and I felt pain shoot up my arm, and I was still still. I couldn't move. I was so still. It felt like I weighed a bunch of a bunch of tons. And. Everything was still in this weird half-darkness where I could see, but there wasn't any light. Finally, I broke the man's grip and was able to get back into the bed and get under the covers. And that's when I started to cry. Cry with my real body, and, and the man was gone, and I could feel myself crying. Then Andy came running. He had been in the room next door, so of course he heard me yelling. And he asked me what was wrong, and I told him to get me out of that room. So we walked down the hallway to the living room. I had him turn on all the lights, and I was just i was just belligerent at that point. Where the man had grabbed me was still warm and still painful, like I'd been stung by some bees. I don't know how to explain it. 
So I told Andy what had happened the best that I could, because obviously I'm still having a hard time describing what had happened, but I told him about the man. The man and the wife beat her. He'd yelled at me. He'd hurt me. I asked him to check all the windows, make sure that they were secure, that the doors were locked. He said he'd been there with his door open and that he hadn't heard a thing. He got this glazed look in his face after we talked for a few minutes, and he went back to his parents' room. I thought maybe he just wanted to make it clear to them that we weren't up necking or anything like that, that, that he was there trying to help me after this strange experience. When he came back, he explained that the reason he wanted to talk to them was about his sister. Turns out, one of the reasons that his family had thought his sister was crazy is because she wouldn't stay in her room. All the years they'd lived there, she'd been complaining that during the night, every so often, a man would come. He'd pull her out of bed, he'd yell at her, he'd hurt her. They just assumed that that was part of some type of mental illness. They would tried to have her get treatment. And eventually, you know, she wouldn't stay there anymore. His parents and, and he, they told me that they felt bad for how they treated her. When it turns out that maybe what she was complaining of really was there. I could see how she would have looked crazy because, well, I felt crazy. But turns out it wasn't just me. So the next day, Andy and I went around town. I met a couple of his friends, but I couldn't get my mind off that experience because it had really shaken everything I thought I knew about the world. In fact, I'm, I'm still not <laughs> convinced that I know much about this world or any other because, well, that's one time where I've really felt like I was in between. I know some people could probably say it was maybe a dream or or astral projection, or Lord knows what, but I know what I saw, and I know what I felt, and I know that it bothers me to this day. Andy and I, we parted on not-so-great terms, and that was my fault, but he did contact me to let me know that in his typical Andy fashion, which was really inquisitive, he'd done some research. He'd found out that his neighbor next door well, for many, many years ago, that she had died under mysterious circumstances that were, I guess, assumed to be homicide, that it was still in, under investigation and they'd never found the person that had killed her. Finding that out really freaked me out. Um, Andy and his family were convinced that myself and his sister had gotten a glimpse of that woman's moments, either the last ones or some of the ones that tormented her in her life. Maybe we'd experienced what it was like the night she died. Maybe it was so horrific that it left a, I guess, a print in the world that transcended even the property she'd been on and somehow infiltrated the room that his sister had in inhabited. And maybe, you know, another theory that we'd come up with was that the man who killed her, that he was maybe dead somewhere, his vengeance had lived on and was seeking out women to, to hurt, to remind of his power. I don't know. I just know that, I just know that I'll never be the same. And I haven't been. Because I used to say that all that stuff was just I don't know. I'm a psychology person. I've had a lot of classes in things like neuroscience. It's actually what I almost went to school for, for a doctoral degree, um, which I'm glad I didn't because now that I think of it, I wouldn't have been able to accept some of the phenomenon that we experience as humans. But I learned all about things like hypnopompic and hypnagogic hallucinations. I know I've had some of those before, the old hag strangling me and, sh and such, but this wasn't that. 
I don't know what this was. And sometimes I'm afraid that, that, well, it might come back. That maybe that man and that wife beater is still looking for me. And that's what's keeping me up this Saturday morning when I should be sleeping in. It's thoughts of this world and that one and hopes that I'll never have to go back to that one. I appreciate you for listening to me. I know I've just been kind of rambling to a microphone here, but I wonder, have you had experiences like that too? Are you a rational person or or like to be seen as a rational person that has this experience that just doesn't quite fit in, in in your own way of understanding the world? If you are like that and do have that kind of thing, well, you're among good company with me.